Well, one thing that's actually interesting is that in 1985, I actually wrote an article about uh, allocating ownership rights in computer-generated works. And at the time that I wrote that paper, um, there was a very lively but small debate about um, uh, who should own copyright in computer-generated works. And I basically said, look, as a practical matter, it makes more sense for the person who used the generative AI system to um, produce this particular output to own the rights, if any rights should be attached to it, because they're the ones who, number one, generated it. They're in possession. Um, they, let's say they generated a bunch of different things and, you know, they chose, you know, this one actually has some, uh, has some like, you know, has some, has some thing that I like and that I think other people might like. So I'm going to choose this one and then I'm going to modify a little bit, you know, maybe edit out some things and put in a few other things. Um, and, and, and so I'm best situated. I mean, the programmer who wrote the, the program that caused the thing to happen, they couldn't recognize it. And the copyright office can't tell the difference right now between AI generated and non AI generated stuff. So, you know, what's the big deal? Now, um, the big deal is that the Supreme Court um, uh, in the early 1990s um, said that creativity, by which they meant creativity by a human being, is a necessary ingredient for copyright protection to be given to um, a work. Um, and so that is the basis on which the Copyright Office has, uh, has said, you know, there's no human creativity, therefore there's no human originality, therefore there's no uh, copyright in the output of these generated systems. Now, again, I think in principle, the Copyright Office um, kind of understands that there may be some situations in which there is a kind of iterative process back and forth, back and forth between the model that's generating outputs and me, the human creator saying, no, take out this part and take out that part and put in this part and put in that part. And there's enough then human um, engagement in the creative process so that you can basically identify kind of elements of the outputs that actually um, look enough like or sound enough like or read enough like something that a human actually was a participant in the creation of um, to be eligible for copyright. That being said, the Copyright Office so far has been pretty strict um, about refusing registration to works, even when there's been a kind of iterative process. Um, and so I think it remains to be seen whether the office or the courts in the EU uh, decide that this level of engagement between the user and the model is sufficient to show that kind of um, my, your own intellectual creation, right? A lot of times um, artists and others use um, assistance to aid them in the development of, uh, of their kind of achieving their vision. Um, and if you kind of think of generative AI systems as tools for human creation, then it would make sense that at some point the use of the tool um, in service of my vision would actually be something that I could claim copyright in. But we haven't seen the Copyright Office in the US um, issue registration certificates to any of the generative AI outputs. But I notice actually that the Motion Picture Association um, comment kind of says, please don't be so rigid uh, because of course, 
Hollywood has been using um, computer generated stuff in its movies, right? The, a lot of the movies where somebody ages or de-ages or, um, or during stunts um, or in um, the kind of like animation of Beauty and the Beast or the like, uh, there are lots of computer generated things in movies and the mo movie people don't wanna have to disclaim oh, this special effect or this particular de-aging thing is something that the computer generated, therefore it's not part of our original creation and therefore is not copyright protected and therefore somebody can steal it. Um, so um, I think it'll be really interesting to see um, how the Copyright Office decides to respond to the motion picture industry concerns.